I don't know. See, our people tend to die early, you know. Our people, a lot of them, yeah, they're sometimes from persecution, being ostracized. Uh, you, you know, the people that truly have the walk in Christ and they won't let the church corrupt them uh, become targeted individuals, you know. And uh, the, like I say, a lot of the gang stalking is uh, spiritual. And people don't seem to understand that. If you make a choice for the Lord, and you really are sold out to Jesus. You will be targeted one way or another. A scientist may want to target you because they can't get through with the normal mind control. They want to know what agency is working. But I've never seen a person truly in Christ with their spiritual walk um, fail at, at, you know, not succeed at overcoming the gang stalking. And, you know, and also there's a great deal of secular groups out there who are trying to fight it in a secular way. Folks, you can have your meetings. That's all great. But just remember this. A lot of them are Christians, but you cannot, you can't fight something that's coming from the spirit. It's a spiritual thing. You got to fight it on a spiritual level and then have your meetings as well. But you've got to be grounded spiritually to fight this thing. Are you going to think it's everybody? It's everything. Okay, you're going to it's it's going to it's going to make you mentally ill because, you you, you know, you're, you're going to react to, to pretty soon to, you know, symbols and things, you know, license plates and people talking on the, you know, the television or the or the telephone. You're going to start, you know, that, what that is when that starts happening like that. It's not psychosis necessarily. What it is, is that the demonic has an opening in your consciousness and they're flooding you with um, crazy stuff. So you're discredited. So when you talk about gang stalking, nobody will listen to you. You're just a mental patient or you're in need of Thorazine. That's it. See, that's, that's basically the issue. They want to make it so that if you talk about this, you sound nuts. So they will mess with you and, and have all these coincidences, coinky dinks going on, right? So that you finally are going, hey, and this happened, and then this happened, and then the UFO tried to contact me, and then I went, there was that guy, and then he showed up again in another state when I got there, and, and then a guy said the same thing to me, you know, yeah, it sounds just like when I went to Maui to a writer's conference <clears throat> back when I was really trying to, you know, write and got a good deal at this hotel and was going to listen to these people tell us how, how to be successful, you know, how to, how to better our lot as writers. Well, anyway, so we get there and I go to this restaurant and the guy goes, we know who you are. And, you know, and he's just straight face, straight, you know, there's, you know, imagine trying to explain. <clears throat> then there are other people taking pictures. You know, there's like someone taking pictures of me, following me around with a camera and stuff like that. Now, obviously, it continued from L.A. to Maui, right? How did it get from L.A. to Maui in a contiguous loop like that? You see. I could have been freaked out totally by that and gone around speaking about all this stuff and I would have sounded completely nuts and that would have been the end of it. I took it in stride. You know, I, I, had, to, I had to swallow it. I had to keep it quiet. I had to just tamp it down. And um, why is that? Because, because, uh, bottom line, um, it was spiritual, the connection. I don't believe it was scientifically literal, like someone made a call over there or it was all, these are all operatives and then there's a certain satellite following me and so they're all alerted at the same time no matter where I went. I could go to Moscow and the same thing would happen. Um, that may be possible. You know, this is back in 1990, in the 90s, okay? This was in the 90s. And I mean, I was really... You know, they told me, you know, I, I, the hint tried to hint to me and I just couldn't take a hint. All you got to do is bow down to Satan and all this stuff goes away. So the gang stalking would go away if I bow down to Satan. You mean it would all go away? Exactly. So that, friends, is how I knew it was spiritual. Bow down to Satan. It all goes away. Bow down to Satan. no more guys popping up and no more people. Look, I've been on this case from the very beginning trying to figure it out. And my, you know, my own family members told me, don't try to figure out, just go with it, baby. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to roll with it, baby. You roll with it. I'm not rolling with it. 
well, then that's your choice. Then you'll get, your life will be ruined. Fine. I'm not going to become somebody's slave so this stuff stops of people following you, taking pictures, surveillance, all that stuff stops. You would go from a targeted individual to a gang stalker. You would be expected then to join the gang and be a surveil and start surveilling others who are targeted individuals whom they consider a threat. They consider anyone to be a threat who is not in Satan. Who knew? Could it be the whole world? <clears throat> Absolutely. Or else that the experience I had in uh, Maui and, <clears throat> and also Europe in France, I had the same experience. That experience would not tr travel if it was just a local gang stalking here or there or the other place. It's global. The network is global. So you, there's nowhere. You could go to Cairo and they'd, be wait, they'd say, we know who you are. The same thing would happen. No matter where you go, they would be ahead of you and ready. How could they be ahead of you? In the spirit, there is no time. Therefore, they can be ahead. These people are operated by demons, basically, by a supernatural aspect <laughs> that informs them psychically, and then they operate physically. And that eventually gets to the guys who operate the satellites and the uh, surveillance and the microphones and the cameras, and they're all part of it as well. But it's, if you want to know the big picture of gang stalking, it's simply Satan's army, Satan's KGB, Satan's FBI, Satan's whatever, making sure that targeted individuals, i.e. those who don't, who are, um, don't pass through to the other side. Really, the targeted individuals are my friends because I don't care if they believe in Buddha or nothing or whatever. They don't know we're brethren, but we're brethren because basically they wouldn't be targeted if they were in on the other side. This battle that nobody wants to talk about, that there are those that are these and those that are those. And the thing that irked the camp that was uh, surveilling us is when I did the, the I did the uh, podcast called Tribes. Tribes, it's up somewhere. You should listen to it if you want, if you like. I or not, but tribes tended to um, sum up the whole thing that we are basically in gangs anyway. Birds of a feather flock together. We're not going to go. You could say Jesus and they could say Jesus and neither one will be able to accept the other. In fact, they could become enemies. And neither one will be able to rise above the other one. There will always be these tribes until the Lord makes it not so. Make no mistake. There's also a bigger picture than that where it's not just tribes, plural. It's two tribes. Only two on the whole world. And many who are on the other tribe say, Jesus, Jesus, absolutely. But they're not made. They're actually genetically not even the same. But yeah, that's not a test that would ever come out. They're just not the same, made the same. They will never speak the same language. They will never get along. And um, a lot of people say, no, we're all made the same. We all have a fallen, wicked heart. Well, you could say that. But it will not explain the fact that there's just some people that are repulsive to other people and vice versa. And it's got nothing to do with anything anyone says. It has nothing to do with political power. I've got lots of liberal friends and people, you know, that are that you'd think I wouldn't be friends with, but I that I am. Because we're on the same tribe or whatever. And then that's it doesn't matter what political party they are or I am or you know, whatever. If I disagree, it doesn't matter. We're of the same we're like blood. And then there's other where you could do everything the same as them. You can do music the same that they do music. You can dress the same way they dress. You can talk the way they talk. You can believe in the same gods they believe in, whatever. And it will just be re repulse. That's the way the world is. It is what it is. Oh, it so irked the other side when I said this. And then uh, the other thing that irked them is when I said, I don't need anybody, meaning... I have the Lord. That's enough. I don't need, you know, I, I will not kowtow to anybody because I don't need anybody. All I need is Jesus Christ. 
I want people. I want my natural instinct is to want to love people and be loved by people. Sure. But I can go without if I had to. I mean, I could be in solitary confinement if I had to. And that really upset them. Those who were stalking me last summer, that upset them greatly that I just don't care. If it turns out to be that they're in another tribe and we're playing a game and this was all just a ruse, you're gone, baby. It doesn't matter to me. Never did matter. No connection. No future. Zero zilch not a gone, baby, gone. That's just the way God made it. I accept it. I accept what the Lord did. But I see how they, they game us. They scam us. They, because a lot of us and a lot of you are really not aware. You're not aware, you know... And you don't have any street smarts, and that makes you a targeted individual because you can't take a cue. You can't take a hint. But they can hint all day long. We are not made like them. We're not made to go out to uh, fall into a trap at Big Bear. We're not made for that. We're not the same beings. We're a different species. We are not all one. It's not one world, one love, please. There is no one love anywhere in this world. It's tribes. And that's the way it has always been. And people with their head in the clouds, with all their highfalutin idea, you know, uh, idealism that we should all be one, well, we should be a lot of things, but we are not a lot of things. Fallen, granted. Sinners, granted. Corrupt, granted. But there are partitions between people. And then there's connections between people. And you can't, where there's a partition, you cannot remove it. If you're a human being, you do not have the power for that. It can't be done with music will not bring the world together, people. And prayer won't either. People have been praying for millennia to bring the world together as one. But those who tend to want to bring the world together as one, I've found that uh, they want the world connected and they want us who are not connected gone or who disagree with them gone. They want everyone on the same page. You know, I'm willing to live my life and let and leave them alone, but they're not willing to leave us alone. And so here we are again. You know, I'm willing to go live in a community with our kind of people and just live my life in peace. But they want to infiltrate, come, and they want to get in my face. They want to change me and force me to live like them. They're not content for me to live my life over here. They're going to follow me around until I bow down to them. They're just destructive, different species people. I'm for individual liberty. That means you want to be a communist, you go ahead. I'll, but I like free speech. I'll speak against it. But I'm willing to let you live. You leave me alone, I'll leave you alone. But you won't. You want to come get me. You want to come punish me if I am successful anywhere in the world, if I grow coconuts or pick up coconuts on the beach and I sell them in the market and I have a little uh, business on my desert island. You want to come tax me or get me or make me bow down even though I'm not hurting you and I'm not policing you, I'm not following you around, but you follow us around because there's a big injustice and someone has to pay.